good evening everyone i welcome you all to this fifth lecture in philatelic series which is organized jointly by maharashtra muksha samvardhini pune zoology association department of zoology savitribai phule pune university pune and department of zoology modern college ganesh kend pune it is my honor to introduce today's guest speaker eminent entomophilatelist dr s ramani Uh, Dr. S. Ramani is presently at the Department of Entomology, University of Agriculture Sciences, GKVK Campus, Bangalore. He joined the Agriculture Research Service of the Indian Council of Agricultural Research in 1985. Served in different capacities and retired in 2011 as Project Coordinator, Honeybees and Pollinators. His areas of specialization are pollination. biological control and taxonomy his special area of interest is the taxonomy of fruit flies belonging to the family tephritidae he has published more than 45 research papers and several popular articles on insects he is the lead editor of a recently published book indian insects diversity and science collecting stamps on insects has been his hobby for nearly 4 decades He has exhibited his collection on insects featured on stamps at several philatelic and other exhibitions. He has written many articles and given several talks blending entomology and philately to popularize both among the young. He is a life member of Karnataka Philatelic Society. His exhibit Insects Did It First was judged as the best exhibit in single page philatelic competition. conducted by Karnataka Philatelic Society in September 2018 he obtained ruby level award in thematic class during virtual one page competition conducted by British Thematic Association for his exhibit insects did it first during january 2022 with this short introduction now i request dr ramani sir to give his presentation insects on stamps ramani sir thank you dr vartak uh, i'll start my screen sharing yeah today thank you dr vartak for the introduction uh, how worthy of that uh, i am i do not know maybe this webinar will tell you something more about it let me start by telling you that uh, i am going to today talk to you about insects that have been featured on stamps i'll try my best to keep the entomology to the minimum but definitely i will be talking a lot of entomology and philately and both i will be blending together to try and tell you a lot about the insects that have come on stamps so i will take you through this webinar in in a, in a, in a way that uh, i i thought what would interest uh, several audiences not only people who know zoology or entomology but also those who know a little bit of philately and those who would enjoy what are all the stamps that have come on insects so this is just to give you a uh, brief picture of the kind of stamps that have been produced on insects uh, so i just put a few stamps there to tell you what are the kind of stamps that have come on insects so i will take you through this uh, if you look at it very generally that is philately uh, postage stamps uh, which are uh, you know the main things about philately are very very unique outlets they are very unique outlets because countries try to you know showcase several things in that say showcase important issues they can i mean used they can be used to raise public awareness and they also commemorate persons or events of national significance so that is why stamps or postage stamps are produced by different countries and stamps are actually kind of windows which show you uh, the art and culture of different countries or the countries by which the stamps are produced and they also you know document the time because of the fact that they are produced at a different times and the kind of technology that is used to produce stamps also you know uh, reflects on the, the the production methodology the production technique and the kind of things that are that are shown uh, it depends on the time in which it has been produced so we can understand a lot of things about uh, the uh, country or the time in which it was produced using these stamps and of course by nature uh, subjects that have been presented on stamps are wide and varied so you have a lot of uh, you know uh, areas on which uh, you know stamps are produced and you know for a stamp collector or for a philatelist it becomes very very interesting to try and understand say several aspects by uh, looking at the stamps and also trying to understand most philatelists as as i would say though there are others who would uh, contest this but most philatelists are thematic stamp collectors because they collect on a particular theme 
So let me now take you to the theme that we are talking about today, which is insects, that is insects on stamps. So in collecting insects on stamps is called as entomophilately, uh, as the word very I mean, rightly pro pro pronounces what, what is done in entomophilately, that is collecting insects on stamps. So entomology is among the most popular themes on stamps, as there are several books that have come on them, several catalogs, several checklists have been produced. A lot of checklists have been produced about uh, the insects that have been come on stamps. So generally, the collectors of insect-related stamps are set to practice what is known as entomophilately. Uh, as you know, insects are everywhere. You know that insects are there in every part of the earth that you can think of, except maybe in the oceans where it is a little less. But even in lava, in snow, in deserts, in water, in air, in all the plants that you can think about, everywhere there are insects. As you can see from this picture of a desert locust, where a boy is standing to, I mean, uh, trying to drive away the desert locust that has come. And of course, the monarch butterfly, uh, several of you know, uh, they are real, really there in uh, several numbers. Uh, if you look at the number of stamps that have been produced uh, with insects featured on them, there are more than 20,000 insect stamps that have been issued. And in these uh, stamps, more than 2,000 different kinds of insects have been uh, depicted. Uh, if you look at uh, insect stamps, as you can, some of the samples that I've shown here, as insects themselves, they, are they have been featured, where the characteristic of insects can be seen. Various other aspects about the insect can also be seen. So that way, stamps are produced insects as in their own right. But in addition to that, in several different scientific contexts, also insect stamps have come out. That is biodiversity, conservation, biological control, vectors of diseases, extinction, fossils, beneficial and harmful insects, insect migration, insect products, pest control, pollination. These are only some that I have projected. There are many more. I'm only trying to give you a glimpse of what are all the thing, contexts in which these have come. In addition to this, insects also several times accompany portraits of entomologists, uh, Nobel laureates, athletes, politicians, museums, etc. So that way, insect stamps uh, are, are, are really a reflection of the various kind of things that, can, that go on in science, as well as other aspects also insects have been featured. Uh, we have been always continuously fighting with insects. As you can see from here in evolution of man, uh, both uh, uh, the apes as well as we have been fighting with insects. So we have a continuous fight with insects, uh, but we have also found that these are very good subjects to be portrayed on stamps. So several stamp designers thought that you could put insects on the stamps. And so that's why you find a lot of insects that have come on stamps. The first uh, stamp with an insect was issued in way back in 1890. I'll show you that stamp a little later. And if you look at the number of issuing entities, there are 866 issuing entities. Out of the 866 issuing entities, of course, some of you may be surprised to see why is it that there are 866 when there are only about 195 countries listed in the UN. There are a lot of entities who are not really countries, but who could be part of the country or whatever it is, or you know uh, others who will be issuing stamps. So that is why the number of entities who issue stamps is much, much higher than the number of countries. So there are at least 866 issuing entities, and of which 332 of them have issued stamps depicting insects from 1890 till about 2000. 20. So a large percentage of the issuing entities, that is 38% of them have issued stamps which are depicting insects. If you look at the UN count of the number of countries, 195 countries, there are only three countries, Myanmar, South Sudan and Timor-Leste, which have not issued an insect-related stamp. Other than that, all the 192 countries recognized by the UN have issued a stamp with insects featuring on them. Uh, if you look at uh, the continents which are, which, which are producing stamps, Africa as a continent leads the world in creating designer insect stamps, and more than 30% of the world's entomological stamps actually come from Africa. So this must be a surprising news for some of you, but that is a fact that there are at least 30% of the uh, entomological stamps come from Africa. Uh, these are some of the first insect stamps that you, you can see here. Most of them have been monochrome uh, color. So you can see here the first insect stamp, which is there on the right on the left, uh, where you see the goddess of uh, plenty. Uh, this stamp was produced by Nicaragua with a beehive, which you can see here. This is the beehive, which you can see here. So it's a goddess of plenty uh, and a beehive is shown here. That's the first one where an insect was featured. The insect related thing was featured on a stamp. The first insect actually that was to be featured is actually an image of a butterfly, which is in the hairpiece of a queen, that is a queen Leokulani of uh, Hawaii. And this was produced also in 1890. So he was, she was the last reigning monarch of Hawaii. 
uh, sometime in 1902, actually, the first stamp where the insect could actually be recognized, though the name is not there on the stamp, but the name could be recognized as Poshi on celery or Sisfinget, Sisfinget moth, at the corners of Queen Wilhelmina's portrait, which was issued by Netherlands in 1902. So these were the first stamps that came with insects featuring on them. Uh, later, a little later, several other insects have also featured on stamps, like in like uh, uh, Lebanon issued a stamp uh, during the Silk Congress in Beirut, uh, showing Bombyx moly, the silkworm, uh, both the larva, the cocoon, as well as the adult. The name is not featured here, but it definitely says it is during the Silk Congress in, in Beirut, and this was issued in 1930 by Lebanon. In 1923 itself, Japan actually issued a, a stamp with two dragonflies, born in Themis insularis, on them. This was actually an earthquake stamp, it is called, because the uh, stamp producing machinery was damaged very greatly by an earthquake that happened in 1923 in Japan. And they had to use other private producers of uh, you know, paper and uh, printing to produce this particular stamp. And this is known as the earthquake stamp that was produced. And this was basically a relief stamp which was produced. And in 1933, also in 1939, you have stamps which have come from Reunion, uh, where the bees are there in the coat of arms of uh, Reunion. You can see here the bees, which is here in the coat of arms. And then here, uh, mosquitoes featured in the stamp, where Anopheles was featured, where this man is kneeling down, the mosquito is you know, killing him. So this is the kind of a stamp that, that, that came to show that malaria and mosquitoes are very, very important. The first stamps that were produced in color was in 1950 by Switzerland. And you can see here four stamps which have been produced, three of them butterflies and one bee, where the names can be seen, but the names are not there featured on the stamps, but the names, uh, we can uh, find out what those species are uh, using uh, techniques that is, you can identify the uh, insects that have been featured on them. So these are the first colored stamps that came uh, with uh, um, um, of, of insects in 1950. Uh, the first identified butterfly, that is with the scientific name printed on the stamp, was produced actually by Sarawak uh, in 1950. Uh, uh, the name was printed on the stamp, which is known as Troidus brookiana. Of course, the name has changed now. Today, it is called as Trogonoptera brookiana. It's a papillionate. It's a birdwing butterfly, Raja Brooks birdwing. And that, that was the first stamp that came with a scientific name on it. It was alongside the King George's uh, King George VI portrait. And then this actually, this butterfly, for some of you who are interested in natural naturalists, who naturalists were interested, was actually named by Alfred Russell Wallace, a contemporary of Charles Darwin, after James Brooke, the Raja of Sarawak. Actually, this is a protected species. And it is a national butterfly of Malaysia. Much later, about 20 years later, a colored stamp has also been produced of the same butterfly. Uh, this picture, actually, maybe I should delve a little more about this, just to tell you that uh, there have been at least 25 orders of insects that have, represent, that have been represented on stamps. Uh, generally, it is recognized there are about 30 orders of insects which are there. And out of these 30 orders, more, almost 25 orders stamps have been produced. I have shown here maybe about 24 orders or so, or 24 or 25 orders uh, are shown here. Uh, 24 orders, are, to be precise, I think 24 orders are shown here. Uh, I would uh, not try, uh, try and tell you that this is the phylogeny of the insect uh, uh, orders. But just to show that there are stamps which have come in all these groups, I have put this uh, picture just to tell you that there are stamps from among 25 orders. So there are some stamps, I mean, some orders in which just one stamp has come out. I will talk to that a little later. And there are also several other groups where a large number of stamps have been produced, uh, like the Lepidoptera, the Odonata, Hymenoptera, Diptera. On all these uh, orders, a large number of uh, stamps have been produced. We will look at uh, these numbers a little later uh, in the next slide or so. There are, of course, there are a few orders on which stamps have not been produced, like Archaeognatha, Embioptera, Grilloblatoidea, Zoroptera, Thysonoptera, and Strepsiptera. Uh, I would like to exclude Grilloblatoidea and Strepsiptera from this list, basically because Grilloblatoidea is today considered as a family, and it is uh, Grilloblatidae, and it has been merged with another uh, order, which is also recognized called as Mantophasmotodea, which has now become Mantophasmotidae, and both these families have been merged into a new order called as uh, Notoptera. So that way, uh, Grilloblatodea is is is, uh, um, is featured uh, is not featured though it as a family it is not featured but as an order Mantophasmotidae Mantophasmotidae has been featured on this Notoptera. 
I would also like to exclude Strepsiptera from this, basically because Strepsiptera is the logo of the Royal Entomological Society and a pictorial cancellation uh, of Strepsiptera is there in one of the things. And then the Royal Entomological Society, his logo is featured in that uh, pictorial cancellation. So that uh, also excludes Strepsiptera. So it's only four, four orders which have not been featured on stamps. So this is just to give you an idea that the large variety of stamps, a large diversity of stamps have been produced of different groups of insects. This gives you a rough picture about uh, the percentage of stamps that have been uh, produced. Of course, this uh, picture is taken from a very good publication, which, was, which came out in 2021 by Nazari. And uh, those of you who are interested could go to this publication and uh, look at it, uh, where he has listed all the stamps that have been produced on insects, as well as uh, arachnids. Arachnids are also listed there in his, in his publication. So here you see that almost 70% of the stamps that have been produced are Lepidopterans, that is the butterflies and the moths, followed only by Hymenoptera and Coleoptera, which is about 9% of the total number of stamps that have been produced on insects. Of course, Odonata, Diptera, Orthoptera also come into the picture, but the others are, 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 are very, very, very minimal. So this is a, a good picture to try and tell you how Lepidoptera, the butterflies and moths, are the maximum featured on stamp, insect uh, stamps. This is again a picture about uh, some data that I'm trying to give you about the various insect orders, as well as the number of species of which have been uh, described in this. This is a rough number of species that have been described in that order and the number of stamps that have been produced in that particular order. So if you can see here, there are at least six orders, Columbola, Zygentoma, uh, Socoptera, Theraptera, Megaloptera, and Refidioptera, there are only one stamp has been produced from that order. Whereas if you look at the one where the maximum number of stamps have been produced, this is 14,103 uh, from, in, in, from in the group Lepidoptera, that is the order Lepidoptera, that is butterflies and moths. Uh, uh, if you um, see here, as I told you, it is almost 70% of the stamps that have been produced on insects and Lepidoptera tops the list. Uh, unfortunately, if you, if, you, if you see the number of uh, insect species that are there, Coleoptera actually tops the list because that is one of the largest orders and it is also one of the largest uh, group of, uh, and, and even in the whole animal kingdom, it is one of the largest ones. So almost 400,000 species are there, but only about 1,800 stamps have come out on Coleoptera. If you look at Odoneta, though there are only about 6,300 uh, species, 542 stamps have come out on Odoneta, that is the dragonflies and the damselflies. So that way, the more charismatic species like the butterflies and the moths and the, butter and the damselflies and dragonflies seem to be the ones which are represented more on stamps rather than several others. Though several of the coleopterans are also very, very charismatic, but it doesn't carry the same kind of enamor that uh, the butterflies carry. Uh, this is just to give you a picture about uh, how we would relate uh, the diversity, the actual diversity of the group which is there with the number of stamps that have been produced. So here actually it is, a, it is a, again the publication of Nazari, where I would like to say that though le Lepidopterans are there in uh, uh, some numbers, but the number of stamps in relation to the number of species is much, much higher. So if you say it is overrepresented about 136 times as compared to the number of species, actually, uh, Coleoptera should have been the one which should, which should have featured more on stamps, but uh, it, is, it is the Lepidoptera which is featured. Similarly, Odonatans also, the dragonflies and damselflies, almost 18 times more represented than others. So you can see the graph also there, where it shows you the Lepidopterans and the Odonatans are the ones which are more uh, represented on stamps as compared to the actual diversity that is seen. So if you see the actual diversity and the number of stamps that should have come, it should have been the Coleoptera, but unfortunately it is underrepresented by minus 0.9.57 and so also Diptera, which is underrepresented by minus 9.85. So this gives you a rough picture about how charismatic uh, uh, orders are featured more on stamps. Uh, if you look at the diversity and abundance of insect orders, uh, most of the countries depicted from around one to seven orders. If you look at the, the one uh, country which has produced maximum number of uh, or insect orders on stamps is Mozambique, which had the highest richness with about 15 insect orders that they have uh, produced stamps on 15 insect orders. Uh, and here, actually, there is some data I, which I have not given here, but just to tell you that diversity analysis has, to be, has been done to try and see which is the country which has produced maximum diversity of stamps, and actually it is Qatar and uh, Canada, though the number of stamps that have been produced is only about 37 and 43, but they had the greatest diversity 
uh, if you look at uh, actually a diversity analysis has been done, Shannon's diversity index has been uh, used to try and find out this diversity. And uh, they have found that Qatar and Canada are the ones which have the highest diversity uh, of uh, stamps which have been, I mean, on, on the insects that are depicted on the stamps have been produced. Uh, though there are countries like Guinea, Guinea, Bissau, and uh, Sao Tome Principe, which have produced a large number of stamps like 799, 651, and 611, but the diversity is not as high as uh, what has been produced by Qatar and Canada, even though the numbers are very high. But these are the uh, countries which produce maximum number of stamps on insects. So this uh, gives you some uh, idea about the kind of stamps that have been produced by different countries and what has happened. I would like to make make an analysis here of one particular order, a little more detailed analysis of one particular order on which I have done some work. So I will be sharing that, that with you. This is Odoneta. Uh, the first stamps on the dragonfly and damselfly was issued by uh, Japan in October 25th, 1923. I told you already about this particular stamp. And it was followed by Switzerland in 1951 and Finland in 1954 from this order, that is Odoneta, damselflies and dragonflies. And out of the 332 countries, as, as I told you, which have issued stamps on insects, 148, that is 45% of them have issued stamps on Odoneta. There are nearly 646 stamps uh, on 248 species, representing about 17 families. Of course, a lot of them are stylized and unidentified ones, but at the same time, dragonflies and damselflies have featured on those stamps. And out of the 39 families that have been recognized in Odoneta, there are at least 17 families, about 43% of the families which have been featured on stamps. And out of 6,350 species, at least 248 species, about 4% of them have been represented on stamps. Uh, there are at least 105 countries which have issued from one to five uh, stamps and 30 countries, five to 10 stamps. And there are about 13 countries which issued more than 10 stamps on uh, Odonatans. Uh, the country which has issued the maximum number of stamps on uh, Odonata is 37. Uh, by Malaysia, followed by China, uh, that is Taiwan, China, with about 34 stamps, and Australia with about 25 stamps. Uh, 38 countries have issued stamps on just one species, that is the Emperor Dragonfly, Anax Imperator. It is very, very un unfortunate uh, to see that there is not a single stamp issued from India featuring the Odonatans. So that gives you a picture of the kind of stamps. I won't be going into great details with the Odonatan, but just to give you a glimpse of the kind of stamps that have come. For example, Malaysia, which I told you, has produced a maximum number of stamps, that is 37 stamps. You can see here 25 stamps, which have been produced. Both males and females of different species are also there. They've indicated which are the male, which is the female also on the stamp. Uh, if you, I, I won't be going into all the stamps order by order because that would have taken a lot of time. I thought some interesting aspects can be project, uh, projected using some of the stamps, but I'll just share with you two orders uh, which may be of interest. One is Coleoptera uh, and Lepidoptera. These two orders I will be talking to you about very, very briefly. Uh, this is the largest order. Coleoptera is the largest order with about 400,000 described species, and it constitutes nearly 40% of the insects. Of course, uh, recognition of this uh, group is by their front pair of wings, which are hardened wing cases called as elytra. And beetles have been featured on nearly 1,800 stamps. This is just to give you a sample of the kind of uh, I mean, insects that have been featured uh, by different countries. Uh, Argentina, Curacao, Comoro Island. As you can see from the list itself, you can see that they are mostly from the African subcontinent. Uh, uh, and, and also other, other countries have also produced stamps on coleopterans. If you look at uh, the Lepidoptera, uh, of course, if you uh, even otherwise also Lepidoptera is recognized, the most recognized and the most popular insect order. There are at least about 180,000 species of butterflies and moths, which have been described. And there are about 14,150 stamps that have uh, featured uh, Lepidopterans. But despite this dominance, that is dominance of number of stamps that have been produced, only 2% of the Lepidoptera species have been represented on stamps. Again, this gives you a sample, just about uh, six stamps I have shown you of various Lepidopterans that have been featured, including larvae. Larvae have also been featured on stamps. If you look at uh, the butterflies, that is bu butterflies and moths, if you see butterflies are uh, I mean, featured more on stamps. And among the butterflies, uh, uh, only 13.1% uh, of the species have been depicted with the highest number of species of swallowtails. As, I, as you know, swallowtails are very, very attractive and very, very beautiful to look at. So more number of swallowtail butterfly stamps have come. That is nearly 54% uh, of uh, the stamps that have been produced on Lepidoptera are of swallowtails. You can see here some of the swallowtail butterfly stamps which are, which are there from different countries. 
And if you look at one single butterfly, which is most depicted, is the monarch butterfly, then is Plexippus, with 290 depictions, is the most common species on stamps. I told you that there are a few orders in which just one stamp has been produced. I am showing here just three orders on which just one stamp is produced. One is Raphidioptera, which is snake flies. Uh, these are actually a group of uh, predatory insects with about 260 species, and they have a very great uh, elongated thorax. As you can see from this temperature, they have a very elongated thorax, and uh, it has a mobile head, so it almost looks like a snake. So that is why it has got its common name as uh, snake flies, and Bulgaria has produced a stamp uh, on, on, on the snake fly. If you look at uh, another order, which is Dobson flies, Megaloptera, uh, these are relatively, of course, unknown insects uh, because of uh, because due to their adult short lives and nocturnal habit, not many would have, would have seen it also. There are about 300 species known from this. And the aquatic larvae are highly tolerant to pollution. Uh, the males have tusks like uh, I mean, mandibles. You can see here tusks like mandibles. And this is the Thompson fly, uh, a single stamp that has been produced on, the, on this order from Belize. If you look at Theraptera or lice, uh, actually, no stamp has been produced with the insect actually featuring on them, but uh, Indonesia used this painting. This painting is by a very famous painter called as Hendra Gunawan, who actually did this painting. This is the original painting, which you can see here, and this painting has been depicted on the stamp here. Uh, actually, it is called as looking for head lice. And so you can see here three women where one is looking at the head lice. And that is why this is featuring uh, as an insect stamp. That is, the, she is looking at head lice. And that is why this has been featured. But otherwise, the lice as such has not been represented on stamps. Of course, there are uh, others uh, I told you, like the silverfish, uh, which, have, which has been featured only on one stamp. The Socopteran, which has also been featured on one stamp. Unfortunately, I don't have those uh, stamps. So I'm not able to show you those stamps. Uh, this is a, a new order which was discovered in 2001-2002. They thought it was a, it, it, it was a new order, Mantophasmatodia. And Namibia issued the first stamp in 2003 itself with the uh, insect featuring in that order. So it's get discovered 2001, working name, gladiator, Mantophasmatodia was then. Then in 2008, in South Africa, the International Congress of Entomology was held in Durban, and it was their conference logo. So that, again, the, the, the Mantophasmatodia was featured on a stamp as well as a cancellation was also there, uh, which is there here. And they also produce a stamp, as I told you, this is the first tick cover that has been produced. So now, of course, uh, the, it is now a family, Pantophasmotidae, and it is combined with Grilloblatidae, as I told you, into a single order called as Notoptera. Uh, this is a very, very interesting uh, thing. So I will be now trying to tell you something about some interesting aspects that have come out from stamps. Uh, both related to scientific uh, discovery as well as some other uh, aspects. So I will try to take you through uh, in, uh, this uh, webinar using some of these examples to try and tell you about some interesting aspects that, that have emerged from stamps. This particular issue of four stamps that came out from Cuba in 1961 was to celebrate Christmas. And it was the last series issued by uh, the communist government to celebrate uh, Christmas. Cuba, Cuba, you know, is, is a communist government. But this particular stamp, which you see at the left corner one, uh, which is which is uh, you know enlarged here, it is uh, of great interest both for the philatelist as well as the lepidopterist. Basically, because this species was uh, named as Otheris toddy, it's an octuid, uh, and uh, it was named as Otheris toddy, uh, and it was put on the stamp. But you can see here, it is also says inlit. Inlit actually means uh, you know, in communication. So, but the species had not been described and uh, this, it, it could have been a very novel medium for publication. The International Code of Zoological Nomenclature actually has certain terms or certain conditions for what is known as a publication. This stamp could not have uh, con been considered as a publication, basically because it doesn't tell anything, uh, describe the actual species, new species, or it gives differences between the sister species or the, or the species which, 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 with which it can be confused. There is no description. There is no this one in that. So this was not considered as a publication. And so the, the name was not accepted till it got published uh, by, uh, you know, described by Desayas in 1965. So four years later, it was described and published as a paper. And the name became available only in 1965. So as authorist study Desayas. So that way, this conflict between uh, philately and zoology in terms of publication or in terms of availability of the name uh, to president. So that way, this is of great interest to people who study. Now I will take you through some of the insect characteristics that have been featured on stamps, maybe morphology, some, some aspects of biology, reproduction, behavior, habitats, 
fossils, insect vectors, pollination, insect products. So these are some of the things that I thought uh, might be of interest to you. So I will take you through them. Uh, if you look at uh, these particular kind, the stamps, this is a very, very wonderful example about how we could study various aspects about insects using stamps. Like I, uh, the, a lot of you would have been wondering uh, the difference between dragonfly and damselfly. So for those of you who do not know the difference between a damselfly and dragonfly, of course, you can go through various uh, literature and find out about it. But using stamps also, this can be very nicely uh, depicted. Like for example, uh, the, in the dragonfly, the compound eyes are very large and touching each other. So you can see that very clearly from the stamp. Whereas in the damselflies, the uh, uh, compound eyes are small, and very separated from each other, widely separated from each other. And if you look at the wings, the wings are generally held uh, at, uh, to the side at rest by the dragonflies, whereas the damselflies fold it back above the abdomen. If you look at the body, the body is short and thick in appearance in the case of dragonfly, body is long and thin in appearance in the case of damselfly. So you see these stamps also give you these features very, very nicely, and you can use it to even teach some of these aspects to children. Here again, uh, continuing the differences between dragonflies and damselflies, you can see here the four wings are the first pair of wings is smaller than the hind wings. Whereas in the case of the damselfly, which is keep, kept completely folded, you can't make the difference between the four wing and the hind wing. They are of almost the same size. And if you look at how the wing is attached to the thorax, here it is not petiolated. When it is attached to the thorax, it is not petiolated. Whereas here it is petiolated in the damselflies. Another character which can be generally seen only by a taxonomist or a person who is studying is some of the wing characters. Like for example, the discoidal cell is like a triangle in the case of uh, dragonfly. So this also you can see from this stamp, you can see here very clearly that the discoidal cell is actually a triangle. Whereas here it is, discoidal cell is four-sided or like a rectangle. So even such details uh, uh, can be seen from the stamp. So that is what I just wanted to tell you that characteristics of insects can also be studied using stamps. Uh, these are some of the behavioral features which have come out on stamps on dragonflies. Again, I'm using dragonflies as an example because a lot of stamps uh, have come out on dragonflies and damselflies. So this is a, a behavior which is known as a perching behavior, which is basically done by the males to guard their territory. They guard the territory both for food as well as to uh, for females. Whenever a female enters this particular territory, they would uh, you know mate with that female, and and they would allow they would not allow other males to come into this territory. So they guard this territory. And this is known as a perching behavior. So they perch in high places or in uh, you know, weeds or something like that, which are tall and they guard their territory. So that is being represented on, this, on these stamps so nicely. Another of the features is basking in the sun. This is basically because they have to fly and they have to raise their muscle temperature. So the thoracic temperature has to, rise, has to go up. So they bask in the sun. And this is very clearly depicted on these stamps where they're basking in the sun and raising the temperature, especially early morning so that they can take to flight. Another of the uh, behavioral features of dragonflies and amphiflies is, is this obelisk position or a handstand position as it is called. And this is done during the midday when the temperature is very hot. They don't want the temperatures to rise up uh, in their body. So they take up this position where minimum sun will fall on it or the shadow of uh, this thing will, will I mean, the, the, sh the shadow itself will protect it to some extent. So this way, handstand position, which is taken up by some of these dragonflies and damselflies, help it to bring down the temperature in the midday. So the, such habitat, such uh, uh, behavioral features can also be studied using stamps. Uh, biology is another thing that can also be studied using stamps. I have given you an example here about butterflies. Here you can see here of uh, the Queen Victoria's bird wing, Ornithoptera victoriae, where the larva, the pupa, and the male and the female are all depicted on stamps. So you can understand the biology of a butterfly also using the stamps. This is also another very good example uh, of, of, of a sheet that was produced of Laos, where in the gutter, uh, you can see the biology is very clearly depicted of stamps. The, the eggs, the larva, the pupa, and the butterfly as such. So you can use these stamps also to study biology. Another example of understanding various aspects about uh, at least butterflies, which has been uh, produced very recently by Goa, very beautiful uh, picture postcards, which have been produced. You can see here the life cycle of the butterfly is featured on this picture postcard and also the conservation status, uh, not threatened, you can see here and the scientific classification of this particular butterfly. This is Idea malabarica, which has been uh, declared as a state butterfly of Goa. 
So you can see here, this is a butterfly, very beautiful butterfly, uh, which has a wonderful flight. Uh, and they have also come out with a QR code on the card. If you scan this QR code, it will it'll take you directly to the Wikipedia site, which will tell you about this particular butterfly. So that way, they have done a wonderful job of trying to tell you something about this butterfly using these beautiful picture postcards. Something more also they have done is that they have produced a permanent pictorial cancellation. This permanent pictorial cancellation that you see here of the butterfly, Idea Malabarica. Uh, this is, uh, as I told you, the state butterfly of Goa. And it is the first of its kind augmented reality permanent pictorial cancellation. So if you scan the QR code, you get the app to use this particular uh, uh, an app. You, you, you can get the app. And once you point the app to this particular pictorial cancellation, you can see the butterfly. I'll show you how that works using this clip. So it's a beautiful way to try and tell you how the butterfly actually flaps its wings. So this is a very, very beautiful example of how technology has been used to produce some very beautiful uh, philatelic material. Uh, coming to reproduction, I again would take the example of the dragonfly, the damselfly, to try and tell you how stamps can be used to talk about the various stages of reproduction that, that goes on, steps in mating. Actually, here you can see the male is clasping. The, it's a very peculiar kind of a, a mating mechanism in uh, dragonflies and damselflies, uh, where uh, you know the um, uh, male clasps the head of the female. Uh, and later, you know, like here, you see the male is clasping the head of the, the male is always more colorful uh, than the female. And you can see here, the female bends its abdomen to the second abdominal uh, segment where actually it receives the sperm. The sperm is actually transferred from the end of the abdomen to this particular position, secondary uh, apparatus, secondary reproductive apparatus. And the female actually bends its abdomen and receives the sperm from the second abdomen. So this is a very peculiar mating position. So the female is bending the bend, uh, abdomen forward. You can see here two examples where this is happening. And then they come to this particular position, which is known as a wheel mating position. So you can see here how this particular thing can be seen using these stamps itself. Continuing further, very, very nicely uh, depicted stamps. These are from both Malaysia as well as Jersey, where a love heart, that is, uh, these ordinates can often be seen flying in tandem like a love heart. You can see here virtually, you know, a love heart. You can see here, you can see here also a love heart. And this is uh, very well represented the stamp. So that way, you know, uh, reproductive biology of uh, damselflies and dragonflies can be also, you know, very nicely put across to people using stamps. And this particular stanza from a poem called as Damselfly sums up their mating very, very beautifully. I clasp you gently by the neck and thus we fly. Your head will hold me in my place behind each compound eye. A love heart shall our bodies make while strums the cricket, slides the snake, our bodies like the sky. I like this poem a lot. It's a long poem actually, which has got other aspects also, but I just took this uh, one stanza to show you how nicely uh, the poet has used uh, poetic language to talk about mating. Again, talking to you about habitats on which uh, dragonflies and damselflies are there, two beautiful uh, sheets that have been produced with uh, four stamps at least in each, where this is one habitat where dragonflies and damselflies are known to breed in stagnant water bodies. A very nicely represented habitat is shown here where it is stagnant water body and like rainwater pools, reservoirs, tanks, ponds, rice fields, etc. So you can see here how that habitat is also projected using stamps. Here is another habitat where dragonflies and damselflies are known to breed in flowing water bodies, even in waterfalls, their uh, their streams, rivers, and waterfalls, you can see them. So again, represented so nicely here, a habitat of uh, these, these dragonflies are in the background, you can see them with, the, with these four stamps. So that way, the habitat is also very nicely represented even in stamps. Uh, coming to you about uh, sharing you something about uh, bees or honeybees, very beautiful stamps have come. A large number of stamps have come on honeybees. I'm only showing you a few of them here. Like this one uh, from Great Britain, which was produced in 2015, with uh, the waggle dance, which is very, very well known in bees, where they communicate to other bees the source of nectar and uh, pollen. Uh, pollination, another important aspect that is done by the bees. And they make honey, they tend young. So all these aspects have been written here and also depicted on the stamps. This is another stamp, uh, which is a beautiful stamp, which is produced from Slovenia in 2018 with Apis mellifera there. And also uh, 
a picture of Anton Jansa, who was supposed to be one of the first teachers of beekeeping. And his uh, birthday actually is uh, celebrated on 20th May. And uh, very recently, we had the International Bee Day, uh, which is actually his birthday. So you can see here Anton Jansa, uh, one of maybe the father of um, uh, beekeeping who is represented also here. Again, stamps from different countries, which show you different aspects about bees, like the queen, which is very well represented here with a long abdomen, the drone with a rounded abdomen, the worker with uh, you know pollen baskets in its hind legs. You can see that all the three of them, which are actually the cast of bees, you can see them here. Uh, here again, you can see this is the queen which is tended by the workers. Uh, again, another uh, aspect which about the bees, which can be shown in the stamps. Here you can see a queen bee laying egg inside the cell. The biology can also be uh, looked at in stamps. The egg, the larva, bigger larva, the pupa uh, is also shown in these stamps. So this way we can you know, understand a lot of things about entomology or insects also using stamps. Coming to insect fossils, these are two beautiful insect fossil stamps that came out uh, from Brazil in 2016. This is of uh, a moth, uh, uh, which has been exceptionally beautifully preserved. Uh, and uh, this is uh, unique because this uh, particular preservation even has preserved the color, the entire body of the animal, including very, very delicate parts like the antenna have been preserved uh, uh, on the stamp. And this is the most uh, extraordinary uh, fossil uh, with the color pattern of the wings, which are shown. And this is of a, of a dragonfly, uh, which is also from the Paleozoic, uh, in, again produced from Brazil. And this is fossil is found in, the, in their geopark, which is Ararepe Geopark in Brazil. And it is a symbol of the Museum of Paleontology in Brazil. You can also see here uh, something about continental drift, where you can see here, Africa and South America, which were together and they separated out later. So this also gives you uh, another idea about this particular uh, phenomenon that, that, that took place. Uh, this is again a fossil stamp, uh, which, which was produced by Mozambique uh, of Meganeura moni, which is a very, very large dragonfly, which was there during that time. Uh, very, very huge, almost like a bird, almost like a bird, these stamps. I mean, this, these dragonflies were there. So these are some fossil stamps that I produced. I'm not... Uh, trying to tell you all the stamps that have been produced in this particular subject, I'm trying to give you a glimpse of the, some of the stamps that have been produced. If you look at vectors, uh, the set C fly and the sleeping sickness uh, transmitting uh, vector has been produced on stamps. These are two samples of them. And then, of course, with Anopheles and malaria, large number of stamps have been produced by different countries. During 1962, when the WHO declared it as an international year for malaria eradication, a lot of uh, stamps have been produced in different countries to eradicate malaria. So you can see here some stamps, even India has produced one stamp about which we'll talk about a little later. If you look at the insect products that have come out, uh, this is a, a very beautiful sample of a, uh, a stamp that is produced in silk. This is entirely silk. This, this, is, this stamp itself is completely on silk. And Thailand produced this particular stamp on, on silk. Uh, traditional uh, silk, which is produced from Bombix Mori, uh, is represented in these Indian stamps. Uh, from different uh, ge geographical areas, Banaras, Kanchipuram, etc., which is there on these stamps. If you look at honey, a lot of stamps have come out on honey, uh, their uses, how they are used, how they're extracted, a lot of in uh, information has come. So these are some stamps that have come out on honey. Uh, there are also some uh, stamps that have come on endangered or threatened species. These are some examples. I won't be talking about all these examples, just to tell you a few examples, like these two, uh, Ornithopterans, uh, that is the paradise birdwing, birdwing butterflies of Papua New Guinea. They are very, very uh, threatened. The most these are these are threatened. This is this is uh, this is in fact in the appendix one uh, of uh, the IUCN and uh, sites uh, says that you cannot uh, you know export these uh, butterflies at all. But uh, even then, a lot of people believe that uh, you know you could uh, use uh, uh, breeding because some farmers and others do breeding of these butterflies. So that is one way maybe to preserve this particular species. But at the same time, it is a very very priced uh, thing and a, uh, and a large amount of money is spent on you know by, by collectors and others who would like to have this particular butterfly. Of course, you also have this uh, uh, Hercules beetle, the Hercules beetle, Dynastrus Hercules. In particular places, they may be a little. Uh, threatened. So this particular one is endemic to Dominica and they say that this is, it is threatened. So also is the stag beetle, Lucanus cervus, uh, which is actually there in most parts of uh, Europe, uh, but in some pockets it is threatened because of habitat destruction and other things. This particular mole cricket again is a beautiful stamp that was produced by uh, U uh, United Kingdom. 
and uh, there is decline in sightings so that is one of the reasons why uh, they say that uh, you know this could be becoming a threatened species so there are these are some stamps very few there are large number of more examples but i sh showed you a few examples of endangered or threatened species that have come on stamps extinct species have also come on stamps this i about this i already told you uh, this is a, one of the largest year wakes of the world and this was uh, i think uh, cited uh, sometime in 1967 after 1967 this has not been cited from this uh, island called as uh, st helena uh, it is a very very large uh, earwick which is almost 84 uh, mm uh, long uh, and it is believed to be extinct today uh, after 1967 it has never been cited so also are some of these uh, thing this carabid uh, actually produced by central african republic mycodema punctellum uh, it actually it's presumed extinct uh, from new zealand you also have this urania uranid uh, butterfly which is also presumed to be uh, extinct especially from jamaica so like this there are several examples of uh, insects which have become extinct which have been produced on stamps there are also entomologists who are featured on stamps uh, i've just given you a few examples here like uh, nathan banks who an american acarologist louis agassi who is an american entomologist henry water bates i'm sure all of you recognize him uh, because of batesian mullerian mimicry Uh, he has also been featured on stamps and ori villiers was a swedish entomologist also has been featured on stamps we have of course an indian example where sir ronald ross who is supposed to have uh, discovered uh, the life cycle of plasmodium the malarial parasite uh, which has been put on stamp so this came out as a as a centenary of his discovery in 1997 1897 is when he discovered this and there is also batista grassi there's a lot of controversy between the two because uh, ronald ross actually got a nobel prize in 1902 for his dis uh, for his discovery uh, but whereas uh, he did not show actually the malarial parasite he did it on a bird but uh, in the case of uh, batista grassi he actually showed uh, uh, the malarial parasite on human beings unfortunately he was denied uh, the nobel prize for whatever be the reason some politics which which goes on in the nobel prizes so that way uh, these the stamp gain importance then we have also william kirby who is a famous uh, british entomologist Uh, who has done a lot of work uh, on various aspects like for example he has written one very very beautiful book known as introduction to entomology four volumes of that along with uh, spence kirby and spence uh, in sometime in 1840s or so uh, so lovely uh, entomologist beautiful i mean person who has done a lot of work and there is this lady evelyn chase cheesman who has been represented on stamps again another uh, uh, british entomologist who worked a lot uh, in especially in atlantic islands or specific islands and she has done a lot of south pacific islands and she has done a lot of work and collected nearly 17000 70000 specimens and they are still there in the natural history museum in england uh, this is of course fabre who is a very very famous entomologist and he has written a lot of books and uh, uh, france actually came out with a first day cover and a stamp uh, in his honor there are other uh, stamps also which have been put in the other countries the one great thing about this particular stamp is that every insect that is featured here can be recognized you can see here he's actually examining using a magnifying lens saturnia pyri and this is mantis religiosa this is scarabaeus sasser a dung beetle and this is lyristus plebejus a cicada so all of them can be recognized uh, with their scientific name in this just with this uh, stamp itself so that is the greatness about the stamp and also this beautiful first day cover that was produced in 1956 uh i think uh, i'll be ending this characteristics of uh, some of these insects uh, with these uh, few few uh, uh, posters uh, this poster actually though i won't be going into the details of it just to tell you that butterflies have been used as charismatic ambassadors you all know about uh, the way the butterfly that is monarch butterfly flies all the way from canada to mexico uh, to to escape the winter the severe winter in canada and gets back to canada Uh, after the in, in the summer or in the spring so uh, mexico as well as canada have actually used the butterfly as an example to show uh, diplomatic relations between the two countries mexico to celebrate 50 years of diplomatic relations between mexico and canada produced this particular stamp as well as this uh, uh, cancellation the canada one year later produced a stamp with a, a monarch butterfly to again celebrate 50 years of diplomatic relations between mexico and canada uh, similarly uh, singapore and philippines also celebrated a joint issue 
uh, to celebrate uh, uh, um, uh, diplomatic relations between the two countries, 50 years of diplomatic relations between the two countries. This one is representing uh, Singapore and this one is representing Philippines. I'm not going into the details. A lot of details are available on the number of species or the, I mean, the species name, as well as the you know, endemicity of these particular species in those countries. Of course, this is a very, very common butterfly, which is there in other parts of the world also, whereas this is endemic only to the Philippines. Another interesting uh, feature is this, where Jersey and uh, China have produced a stamp. That is, Jersey produced a stamp of two butterflies. There are actually four or four, five uh, uh, others which are also there, but these two I am showing you here of these two uh, butterflies, which are found in both in Jersey as well as in China. The greatness about this particular thing is that this is known as the Paleoarctic region. So that is a zoogeographic region. And this entire zoogeographic region, if you see, Jersey is in one end and China is in the other end. So to celebrate the relationship between Jersey and China, this particular butterfly was used. And this partic particular butterfly is found both in Jersey as well as China, the two ends of the Paleoarctic region. So that is why this, this stamp gains greater importance. Uh, this was one of the things which uh, Dr. Vartak told you about insect data first. I have featured here uh, three uh, particular uh, features about insects which were done by them first and later uh, duplicated or rather, uh, you know, replicated by man. One is to find paper uh, where uh, the VASPs have been doing this for a very, very long time. Uh, so uh, it is believed that the Chinese who discovered actually paper, one of them who actually was looking at the wasp making paper and he used a similar technique to make paper. Today, of course, paper is very wide, widely used, but insects were the first to find paper. Similarly, they were the first farmers. Uh, if you look at the ants, the leafcutter ants, as well as termites, they uh, cultivate a particular fungus. And this particular fungus it becomes food for their colony. And they follow all the practices of agriculture, just like we do, uh, including weeding and cultivating a pure culture, et cetera, et cetera, is what they do. And so this is uh, you know, something which has been practiced by them for nearly 65 million years, whereas we are you know, practicing agriculture for hardly about 10,000 years uh, we have been practicing agriculture. Another of the first that, that I would uh, go with, with insects is the pot, uh, the pot which is done by the uh, potter's wasp, which actually makes a pot very, very similar to the pots that we make use without a wheel. Uh, so they're able to make this pot so nicely without a wheel, whereas we actually have to use a wheel to make a pot of, of the kind. So they are the ones who make actually maybe uh, enthused us to make pots. So these are beautiful pots that they make and you know put the larvae in them and lay an egg inside them. So these are potter wasps. So we should always really remember that nature is the best teacher. Uh, again, uh, globe trotters, that is, they are globe trotters. Some of them, I've given you three examples here. Uh, the monarch butterfly, about which I already talked to you about. So, this uh, really makes an, a journey, amazing journey, about 4,000 kilometers from southern Canada to central Mexico. Uh, and uh, you know, the entire migration takes about five generations. So, there are stamps which have been produced of the monarch butterfly. I told you a large number of stamps have been produced on that. Also, the painted lady butterfly, which actually uh, flies all the way from Europe uh, across the desert of uh, Africa. Uh, and then it returns back. So this is one of the, I mean, longest ones, 12 to 14,000 kilometers, uh, one of the longest but butterfly migrations known. Uh, of course, the closer home, uh, we also have this wandering dragonfly, Pantella flavescens, which makes an ocean crossing all the way from India to Africa and comes back. So this is about 14 to 18,000 kilometers, and it takes about four generations to make the trip. A, a number of countries have produced stamps of, of this particular insect. Uh, insects incorporated other themes. I won't be going into this list, but just to tell you that there are at least 30 or 40 themes on which uh, insects have been featured. I will show you some of the themes uh, in the following slides. So art, archaeology, medieval manuscripts, economy, savings, women's liberation, nuclear proliferation. You think of the subject, there have been insects which have been featured on those stamps. Art. Here you can see two art pieces that I've shown here. One is Bellflower and Dragonfly by a Japanese painter. Uh, a stamp produced in uh, by Lesotho in 1999, uh, the 150th death anniversary of the painter. And this is another uh, ants painting by Peter Kogler. Uh, for, and this stamp was produced of, of this painting uh, by, by Austria. Uh, closer home in Bangladesh, they used uh, one of the butterfly art pieces to represent the uh, 18th Asian Art Biennial, which was held in ba Bangladesh in 2018. So you can see here a butterfly, which was used both in this stamp as well as in the first day cover to talk about art. 
insects in culture a lot of uh, insects have featured in our culture i will give you a few examples of uh, the, those that have been featured in our culture one of them is the scarab beetle which was actually uh, uh, in played and thought of as god by the egyptians uh, and this particular first aid cover which is produced by uh, united kingdom was uh, you know as a this one of uh, you know a golden jubilee of the tutankhamun discovery tutankhamun was a very famous uh, ancient egyptian pharaoh in on his in his uh, mummy or in his uh, pyramid inside a large number of articles that he had used were there one of them was this particular brooch with a with a with a beetle here you can see the beetle here which is featured on the stamp also here and 130 of his walking sticks was uh, found there and this greatly embellished pectoral form of a brooch was also found so this is featured on the stamp here and they they used to actually uh, worship uh, this as a god dragonflies uh, have uh, uh, have contrasting uh, cultures that is in cultures are uh, look at it uh, in contrasting ways the japanese actually uh, look at the dragonflies as very good and they have been featured on stamps in fact uh, tombo is is what they call it so in japan it is an important cultural symbol and they think that it brings in you know rich harvest so that is a national emblem and japan itself is referred to as akutsushima that is known as the dragonfly island and uh, dragonflies have also been very very popular in several of the haiku po haiku poems i already told you about the stamp which was produced in uh, 1923 by japan uh, with a, with two dragonflies here one in themis insularis and uh, this was the first country to come out with a stamp on a dragonfly and they also the first country to prepare a uh, dragonfly nature reserve in nakamura they are also worshiped in several african countries like uh, for example in kiribati uh, this is a pacific island actually uh, where the young naro here is a young naro who actually sends a dragonfly to find those in darkness so they believe that a dragonfly can go and find those people who are there in darkness unfortunately the uh, west actually looks at the dragonfly as evil Uh, in fact some of the names that are given are little horse of the devil snake doctor devil's darning needle eye poker these are some of the things the names that are given to the dragonfly so in western countries folklore holds that dragonfly is evil and they believe that the satan is said to have sent dragonflies to the world to cause mischief of course in usa even a uh, superstition exists that uh, you know the children are threatened by saying that if a dragonfly comes it will stitch your mouth if you tell a lie it will stitch your mouth and so they talk about this as the darning needle you can see here it's almost looking like a darning needle so abdomen so that is one of the reasons why uh, they believe that this is a darning needle and they used to threaten children who lie to say that your lips will be stitched if you if you do this uh, if you look at insects on in everyday lives uh paper kites uh, have been produced with dragon uh, dragonfly and this is a stamp which has been produced with a the paper of a paper kite and also a pictorial cancellation a stamp has been produced here uh, with ant shaped chairs just like an ant these chairs are shaped uh the world environment day to celebrate that the stamp was uh, released by india and there are butterflies featured on world environment day this is a very very funny stamp uh, that uh, was produced by uh, finland uh, this talks about how you know uh, uh, there is a competition where men are asked to sit on an ant hill uh, without any clothes and then man who sits in the ant hill for the maximum number of time maximum number of uh, duration is actually given a prize so this is a finish oddity and you have some ants here and this is a finish oddity which uh, on which a, a competition is held for of a man sitting on an ant hill cartoons also left several stamps have come uh, with insects featured on them i'm sure several of you would have seen this particular beautiful movie called as bugs life Uh, and uh, several of the characters in bugs life are featured in stamps from palau as well as from usa i'm sure all of you recognize these two characters atta and princess atta and flick from this uh, walt disney film even uh, alice in wonderland uh, mickey mouse all these feature all these uh, characters also have insects featured on them i'm not showing some of them here in children's art also you have stamps which have been produced Uh, uh as you can see most of the indian stamps that you can see for example children's day uh, children art is used here and you can see here a butterfly two butterflies here you can see here some butterflies which are featured here is uh, nature india where a butterfly uh, uh, which has been painted by a child has been used as used in the stamp you can see here in japan during the international year of the child 1979 a stamp was produced of a of a child which who is looking like an astronaut who is out in space trying to capture a dragonfly and a butterfly and here is another of the things b a part of it using b uh, into children's day uh, they have used the bees to represent in this uh, mark in this first day cover 
uh, economy and savings, uh, insects have also been featured. Like for example, this stamp, which shows uh, ants actually save for the winter, you know. So you can see here, they are showing coins being used as a representative, as a benefit of thrift, uh, where, where ants are using coins. India has also produced a stamp with the honeybee to show about savings. This is actually the emblem of the National Savings Organization. So you can see here the honeybee is featured here and the hexagonal cells here. The honeybee is featured both in the stamp as well as in this uh, cancellation. So it is uh, uh, you know, showing you economy and savings. Uh, insects have also been featured on coins and I'm, I'm trying to show you here uh, insects that are featured on both the stamp as well as the coin. Here is the bull ant, Myrmesia, which is featured on a stamp in a coin, uh, in a series of uh, stamps that was produced, Things That Sting from Australia in 2014. You can see the coin here, as well as the stamp, the coin and the stamp featuring this particular insect. So here again, there's another golden stamp of a replica of a flower fly, Milesia uh, virginian, virginiensis, uh, in the series Insects and Spiders produced by USA. And you can see this flower fly also on this gold stamp replica, which is there. This was produced as a series called as Insects and Spiders. Uh, insects have also been featured in uh, climate change. Uh, you can see here this particular cancellation of this uh, meter mark, which is there, which is talking about a giant dragonfly from the Carboniferous. I'm sure people who are interested in uh, 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 geology would be interested in this particular one, where this is a postmark which came from the geology department, uh, uh, Germany, making climate witnesses of Earth history. As you know, the dragonfly has come and seen the you know, birth and the death of the dinosaurs. So that is why this has been used as a, as a representative to show how climate change has been noticed by these insects uh, from you know, the birth of the dinosaurs to the death of the dinosaurs, the dragonfly was there and it has even lived beyond that. Uh, Mexico also has pro produced stamps using the monarch butterfly. Monarch butterflies is threatened by climate change. So to show that they have produced a stamp which was produced during the climate change conference uh, in Mexico in 2010. Uh, I would like to maybe end this lecture, maybe in the next five minutes or so. Bartak, I think, am I exceeding my time or is it okay? Hey, okay, okay, sir. Okay. Just a few uh, slides on Indian stamps. Maybe in the next five minutes, uh, I will close. Uh, just to tell you that uh, stamps have come out uh, from India also on uh, insects, but most of them cannot be recognized uh, with their scientific names. Several of them are uh, featured as uh, margins, or, uh, you know, in uh, stylistic uh, fashion, some of them have come, uh, so they cannot be recognized, but there are a few which can be recognized. I will show you some of them here. So these are some of the Indian stamp issues. Uh, like, for example, most of them uh, have been, as I told you, have been stylized and unidentified insects. The first stamp which featuring an insect which came from India was in 1955, uh, where the mosquito was featured, uh, the malarial stamp, which is featuring a mosquito, Anopheles uh, uh, culifasis. Uh, of course, in 2017, there are four stamps. I had also showed you some uh, I mean, picture postcards that have came come from Goa very uh, recently, but these are some of the stamps. But Ro Sir Ronald Ross, I already told you, and uh, these are you know stamps which have come out of uh, various national parks where you know the insects are also featured. This is Goa Carnival where a butterfly is featured. This is a, a definitive stamp that was produced with butterfly, but no scientific name in it. Uh, these are some of the butterflies which uh, scientific names uh, which are which are featured. These are four endemic butterflies, mostly from the northeast, which have uh, which came out in 1981. Very beautiful uh, stamps: uh, Kaiser Ehen, Northern Jungle Queen, the map butterfly, and the red lace wing. All of them are featured, and, and this this is a beautiful set of stamps that came out in 1981. Then in 2008. Uh, we had the endemic butterflies of Andamans, which came out. The, both the male and the female have been featured here. Uh, that is Rosaria rodifer, uh, which is given as Pacliopta rodifer in the stamp. Uh, this actually exhibits uh, sexual dimorphism, as you can see from the stamp itself. And uh, also the Andaman mormon, Papilio mayo, uh, which is the first uh, endemic butterfly which is described from the Andaman and the Comorb Islands. And actually the name was given by uh, in honor of Richard Burke, who, uh, who was a uh, you know sixth Earl of Mayo, and he uh, was assassinated in Port Blair in 1872, a year before the butterfly was actually discovered. Actually, here the male resembles the blue mormon, and the female mimics the unpalatable Andaman club tail. So this is unpalatable. This Andaman club tail is unpalatable, and you can see here it mimics the uh, un, uh, Andaman club tail. So these are the, these are the two, and uh, actually four plus four, eight stamps with scientific names on it. Other than that, 
no scientific name has been produced on any of the indian stamps only stylized ones or you know which are uh, butterflies or other insects which are featured on the margins are there this is a definitive uh, stamp that was produced in 2000 uh, and this is actually can be recognized as a tony coster acrea tepsicore uh, this can be recognized as a, 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 as a as a species so that is why i have given the species but it is not given here it is only given as butterfly Uh, this is another uh, four set of stamps that came out unfortunately no scientific name has been put on the stamp it just says ladybird beetle looks very colorful and very nice and entomophilists will be really fascinated at looking at these stamps but unfortunately none of these uh, ladybird beetles that have been featured which can be recognized again i have given you the names here are from india so this is very very unfortunate we have not put our own species on the stamps but species which are there in other parts of the world on the stamp of course Uh, coccinella septum punctata is there in india but actually its origin and distribution is paleartic uh, european though it is also found in india but the rest of them are not found here one is uh, north america another is north and south america another is europe so all these uh, four stamps actually do not represent the uh, you know the 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 beetles a large number of beetles are there ladybird beetle more than 600 species or more of ladybird beetles are there in india but none of them have been featured which is very very unfortunate which is uh, you know also goes to show that uh, you know in producing stamps we are lacking in not consulting experts to try and come out with stamps i have written also an article uh, passions and requests of an earnest philo- uh, entomophilatelist in the wire those of you who are interested can look at this uh, particular article to get you more details about about these particular stamps Uh, some fdcs and special covers that have come uh, from india one of them two of them on conferences uh, second international conference on apiculture uh, they came out with a stamp with a b and also during the recent conference an international conference on biology of butterflies a special cover was released uh, with uh, you know uh, the southern birdwing which is represented here uh, and also a cancellation uh special covers were also released uh, uh, for the first in india's first insect museum which is then tamil nadu agricultural university coimbatore and another to celebrate indian insect diversity uh, on 31st uh, january 2019 a special cover was re- released in bangalore uh, celebrating the 75th birthday of a very famous entomologist dr veratmath Uh, these are the uh, maxi cards i was talking to you about uh, 10 maxi cards have been produced by goa uh, with a presentation pack on butterfly and moth diversity and also a cancellation uh, uh, coinciding with goa pex or a philatelic exhibition that was held in 2021 in november and goa has produced these four beautiful uh, maxi cards with the butterflies and moths featured on them as well as this uh, qr code which will take you to the wikipedia site for this particular butterfly or the moth Uh, so insect stamps are actually very very beautiful uh, resources for education as that's what i think and i believe that uh, from the my presentation you will understand how we can use insect stamps to educate uh, various aspects about entomology also to young children to young others so they are very very uh, unique uh, um, in communication mechanisms and they could also you know uh, create an interest in children and others to start collecting stamps uh, of of different uh, hues uh they could use choose their own subject and so this could also be a starting point for them to uh, you know understand nature uh, entomology as well as to try and collect stamps on different aspects so the if you look at the diversity of themes as i showed you uh, represented in various contexts uh, you can see that they they are very very excellent avenues to familiarize students with uh, various aspects of entomology in art culture science and everyday life around the world Uh, so actually philately and entomology which i am interested in both philately and entomology they are the beautiful multifaceted fields of study and if you look at uh, people who collect insects and you know keep them in boxes or cabinet boxes they the colors will fade several of them colors will fade whereas if you collect stamps the colors of that will not, hardly fade so you can really uh, do a very good collection of insects uh, using stamps itself so is it's, it's a treat really a treat to uh, i mean collect stamps on insects so for some of some of them like me who are both entomological and philatelically inclined we find this uh, hobby entomophilatelia is a very interesting uh, hobby and i find it very very uh, interesting to study stamps as well as make uh, entomological observations using those stamps so entomophilatelia uh, is a methodology by which you can collect insects without a net uh i would like to end by 
this quotation can be a very uh, wonderful thing it is no thicker than a beetle's wing and it on the world for you exactly where you tell it to in addition to that i would also like to tell you i have not moved out of bangalore but i have been able to understand or study insects from different parts of the world just by sitting in bangalore so that way the stamp takes you to different parts of the world and the stamp also takes you to different parts of the world sitting in one place so that way i i really feel that uh, stamps are a very very good uh, subject to study and understand various aspects not only uh, about insects but about various other aspects several, several themes can be chosen and insects is one of the themes which i have chosen which has you know really made me my my life uh, very wonderful i would uh, this will be the really the last slide uh, where i have shown you two uh, cartoon strips uh, of uh, this particular cartoon strip which is uh, uh, you know beautiful uh, representing about uh, the hobby here he says Uh, you know i've had trouble choosing a new hobby then uh, the, the the tiger asks him what what did you first i wanted to collect bugs he says first i wanted to collect bugs i'm sorry uh, then I, i wanted to collect stamps then what did you decide on stamp bugs he says that is i started stamping bugs instead of collecting bugs or stamps another of the things is there where you have in, as a as a collector or as a students you are asked to collect stamps so here is a strip which shows about uh, you know this um, uh, character who is looking at uh, an insect and uh, uh, the girl who is a who is his classmate saying that the bus is coming please come he says there is a bug i want to i want to stamp it so still stall the bus driver he says and he stamps it and then he shows the uh, foot to the girl saying that please scrape it off and tell me what it is Where they never get uh, this thing so this is just to tell you that collecting insects also is a, is a is a good hobby and a lot of people can do it. but i would like to end by saying that admire some stamps do not stamp insect and do not stamp in like to end by acknowledgement acknowledging the karnataka philatelic society which has encouraged me and the american topical association for the lovely checklists and handbook on insects on stamps of the world that i produced and this beautiful paper i told you nazari 2021 uh, which where he has listed all the stamps which have been produced in insects and made an assessment of uh, how they could be used as effective teaching aids i also would like to thank dr ashwik at uh, department of entomology who has helped me a lot and uh, ramu another philatelist and several philatelists and dealers who helped me build my collection Uh, with that i think i will end uh, maybe i have exceeded the time about 5 or 10 minutes i am sorry to the organizers for that thank you so much thank you dr bartha thank you thank you thank you very much sir it was wonderful lecture and really miss i think i don't have words to say about this but any questions uh, may i uh, yeah, yeah. ask a, one um, isn't are prawns and uh, shrimps also uh, insects no, or they are not <laughs> i mean somewhere i think we were taught so i just wanted a clarification on that that is one the other thing are beetles pollinators in any way yeah, there are there, there are beetle pollinators there are some species of beetles which are pollinators thank you so much uh, dr ramni this is chaitanya yeah i have a question now so these uh, insects are actually beautiful creatures but uh, some of the uh, insects are nearing extinction mm -hmm. so how can an entomophilatelist contribute to the reversal of this uh, extinction yeah as i told you uh, you know uh, if if we can create awareness uh, using these stamps Uh, about uh, conserving uh, some of the areas conserving them you know a lot of stamps actually as i told you have been produced uh, you know of endangered uh, species so using these stamps uh, we could talk about you know how uh, habitat destruction various other things that we do are uh, you know uh, causing damage to several of these species so that way we could definitely raise awareness Uh, using some of these uh, stamps which have been using these species on stamps to uh, create awareness and uh, help in you know preserving or conserving them so maybe greater awareness could be created using using these stamps i have a question regarding uh, the migration of butterflies from canada to mexico you said is it between generations because the yeah, there are butterflies, it, it, butterflies are for a very short duration like five right. or seven as, as, as i told you in, in all these migrations is not in one life cycle 
they take four to five generations to to to, to do the cycle you, you, both for the dragonfly both for the dragonfly as well as the as the monarch butterfly uh, it takes a few generations actually they breed in between in america in some post post portions of america they breed and then they move on one generation and then they move on just to continue the generations right yeah. so they won't be extinct that's the yeah. reason why they migrate from okay right thank you how oh, hello dr ramani sir yes yeah myself uh, girish from uh, icr directorate of floriculture research pune okay yes dr girish yes sir it's nice talking to you sir sir is this uh, only charismatic nature of the insect is a criteria or any other criteria are there for selecting these insects uh, to be displayed on stamps see actually what happens is see the different countries think of uh, it as see there are, there are some countries which uh, use this as a method of revenue you understand so they that becomes you know like like tourism uh, stamps are used as a method of revenue revenue generation for example uh, pitcairn islands is a very 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 small country which is there but they produce very beautiful stamps very wonderful stamps uh, on uh, this one so tourism as well as uh, production of stamps is the major source of revenue for them so they would like to use colorful and beautiful insects on the stamps so that charismatic uh, nature of those things can come but of course i also showed you where pests uh, you know pests have also been featured on stamps there are a lot of uh, pests which have been featured on stamps so to create awareness on to to, to various things uh, they have also been uh, put on stamps then is is to is to talk about various aspects like uh, you know insect products or you know their their help in pollination so various conservation biodiversity uh, climate change for all these things uh, insects have been featured but the major thing that happens is uh, because of uh, the charismatic nature of butterflies more of them have been featured on stamps because thank they you, look sir. very nice on the stamps okay thank you sir uh, yeah i have a question this is professor odrich uh, at outset let me congratulate dr ramani for a very nice presentation and a lot of information on insects on stamps So my question is whether there are any stamps issued on the water insects. Because many yeah, times there I are see... stamps issued on water insects. Yes, quite a few of them. See, unfortunately, you know, uh, I, 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 I had a, I had to make a choice of various things to put on the put on the this put on the presentation. So I was not able to put everything on my presentation. I have actually maybe about two percent of my collection is what I have been able to, or less than two percent of my collection is what I have been able to show you on the on, on during this lecture. But there are large number of themes on which uh, you know insects have been featured. A lot of aquatic insects have been featured on stamps. Yes. Thank you. Are are you going to do any future talks, Dr. S. Ramani? Thank you. It was very nice talk, and we learned a lot about it. Thank you. Uh, I mean, future talks in the sense, if uh, you know, uh, some, yeah, yeah. Some, it all depends on you know the kind of people who would come out for, for for requesting me. I have been doing these talks. I have been doing this. It's like these talks, for example, some of these talks I have done is. one is for uh, some of them for wwf for world wildlife fund i have done some talks uh, dr bartha kasmi to give a, give a talk so i i i i gave it so if uh, somebody comes forward i am willing to give a talk as no issue at all <laughs> and uh, this lecture will be available on our youtube channel mission devrai so later also anyone can view uh, ramani sir's lecture on our youtube channel mission devrai so that will be available later tomorrow or day after tomorrow so thank you Sir, this is Chitra from Pandithur, sir. Huh? Yes, Doctor Chitra. Sir, that was awesome, beautiful. Your lecture was really awesome, mind blowing. Uh, I would like to add only one thing, sir, on the entomologist, uh, entomologist and stamp. There is one stamp on Maria Sibella. In fact, she was one of the uh, first. Uh, I would call her the first lady entomologist. Okay. In the world. She undertook an expedition to Suriname from Amsterdam, okay. uh, even before Charles Darwin could do. Go on a voyage to elsewhere. So they have issued a stamp about. I mean, she has uh, collected many insects and she has drawn plates on insects. And she has told that she and her daughter. So the German government has issued a stamp on. I would like. Uh, I mean, I I I I I can recall this stamp, but unfortunately, I told you I was not able to project everything on on my presentation. So I took some representatives and I had to make do with those representatives. Beautiful, sir. This is awesome. Mind blowing. Thank you, thank you so much, Doctor Chitra. Thank you. So again, another Chitra coming up, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. This is Doctor Chitra Shankar. 
Yes, okay. sir. Okay, okay. okay. So I am really reeling under the knowledge. Such an amazing lecture, and uh, I have learned so much. In it's like some uh, you know concentrated serum of knowledge which we got in this one hour. I have two things. Sir. One is where would we be able to see your collection, and second is. Uh, can you share some authentic uh, uh, people from whom we can buy? These are the two things that I would like to know. Uh, see, actually, uh, I mean, collecting stamps uh, is a is a very some of the philatelists uh, would know a lot of philatelists would know it's a it's a very very uh, difficult uh, job. Actually, uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm I have not displayed my collection like that on a website or something like that. That is not something that I have done. But I have a collection. Actually, if I look at my collection, some of them are sorted and uh, put on album pages are there. But a large number of them are unsorted and and still. Uh, you know with my with, with me in my album uh, books so that way i have not been able to really uh, you know devote much time to put them into album pages I or whatever i can volunteer sir yeah i can volunteer for that so nice so nice of you thank you so much <laughs> it will be very nice if you can because there are a lot a lot of catalogs already available about this and we can we can use them to you know sort these stamps or whatever it is so a large number of them can be sorted down but regarding collection uh it's a kind of uh, 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 dizzy thing that is uh, several times it is beg borrow and steal is one method by which uh, you can you can do this collection by having uh, pen pals uh, by having you know links that like, nowadays actually uh, what is known as post crossing is also done and a lot of other people with whom you can keep touch with uh, who are you know your own who collect your own stamps can be done there are also dealers Who, who give you stamps? A lot of dealers are available all over the country in India. A lot of dealers are there. A lot of websites, a lot of internet websites, uh, Colnect, uh, and various other websites are also available from which you can collect stamps. But uh, you know, uh, some of them are very expensive, and it becomes a costly hobby sometimes. So it is also known as you know, not only a king of hobbies but also hobby of kings. Thank you very much, sir, for giving this wonderful lecture uh, and. Actually, we plan to have uh, Ramanisa's series of lectures as many uh, uh, this thing. That actually, I was uh, asking sir to give presentation on butterflies on stamps, but uh, he told it will be it will take some more time to um, pre prepare presentation. So in future, we would like to have your many lectures also in future. Uh, so I think with this, I think we'll conclude this today's session, and uh, next month. The, that that will be the sixth lecture in philatelic series on fourth saturday like today that will be on 25th june there will be a talk by dr sandeep shrotri he is actually a medical practitioner uh, he is also a very renowned philatelist and he will be talking about birds on stamps so next month that is on 25th june fourth saturday we have a lecture by dr sandeep shrotri on birds on stamps what time it is on saturday same time same time great this is this is a and great time i live in usa those, those who great want to have more country. information or those who want to have more information they can write to us on our uh, uh, email id that is missiondevrai@gmail.com missiondevrai@gmail.com and all our earlier lectures also they are available on our youtube channel mission devrai so please go to our channel subscribe also So I think with this we'll conclude doctor, the session. Thank you doctor, very much, Doctor. Most of them have appreciated your lecture, sir. It was an amazing lecture. So very yeah. beautiful collection and uh, yeah. thanks for your amazing lecture. Awesome lecture, awesome collection. People are fascinated and they have thanked you for this very interesting and informative lecture. Thank you so much thank you it was my pleasure i enjoyed i, I always enjoy uh, i mean you know, talking about some of these aspects to young people i'm sure some young people would be interested in collecting stamps or you know understanding about insects uh, using this particular theme so that way i think uh, I, I, maybe i have if i, be, I mean uh, able to bring the interest of a few young people to this particular field i would be very happy <laughs> i also enjoyed dr chitra shankar on the mimicry of insects and this one i i really uh, thank you both it was really awesome and uh, to listen to your lectures and collections and uh, we enjoyed it a lot thank you thank you chitra thank you thank you thank you so much
I think now, I think, should we conclude, sir? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so, huh? So I think with this, we'll conclude today's session and we'll meet next month on full Saturday, talk by Dr. Sandeep Shrotri on birds on stamp, same time. You'll get the link and other things. And those who want more information, they can write to us, uh, missiondevrai at gmail.com. And they can watch this lecture also. They can tell other people, those who are not able to join today, to see on our YouTube channel, Mission Devrai. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Varta. Thank you all.